reject modernity, embrace tradition. What the hell is happening? Why are fast food establishments ditching the architectural diversity that reinforces their brands? When did we decide that it was in any way okay to replace the family fun and vibrance of our restaurants with what looks like the commune of a gothic orgy? I'm Ben Thompson and I hate the trends of fast food architecture. Not only do they feel like an attack on my childhood and the innocence of children today, but it just looks oh, ugly. No. So I'm making this video to analyze the history of fast food architecture and try and figure out what's going on here. Highlighting major offenders like McDonald's, Pizza Hut, and Taco Bell. That fun, classic style of architecture I'm referring to is Googie architecture. Googie. Googie which was popularized by coffee shops in the mid 20th century in Southern California. Architectural critic Douglas Haskell coined the term when he wrote a scathing review of Googie's coffee shop in 1952. Googie's was designed by Frank Lloyd Wright student John Lautner, and despite the review, this Tomorrowland aesthetic swept the nation as the design for airports, Vegas hotels, and even the famous Seattle Space Needle. Perhaps the most famous iteration of this style came onto the scene on May 15th 1953 when the Golden Arches were born in Phoenix, Arizona. Googie was good. Too good. The sheer popularity of a style whose identity relied on being unique meant that many people grew to hate the style of architecture. As the environmental movement grew in the 1960s, particularly in California where Googie was born, a lot of people started referring to the style as visual pollution. But I think it's important to point out two integral characteristics of Googie architecture in order to better understand it. First, Googie was designed in an era where more and more Americans started to travel with cars, which meant that businesses had to try harder to attract customers. And one of the ways they did this was through the eye-popping designs of their buildings. This is why, understandably, many did not like the style and called it out for what it was, a publicity stunt. But second, Googie architecture was designed in an era of space-age optimism, where humanity was doing well, by and large, and started to look towards the stars. This is why many of the buildings are defined by their science fiction-esque look, and many of them even resemble UFOs or spaceships. It was the Jetsons. We were living in the Jetsons and everything looked like a cartoon. So we went through the space age where our architecture evolved to be vivid and vibrant to reflect the faster pace of society. It was a time of optimism and comfort, and our fast food restaurants were perfect reflections of that. And now we're here and everything's ugly. Perfect, you're up to speed. Now let's take a look at the biggest offenders of architectural blasphemy. Ronald, I never got to say thank you if you caught me at a case. McDonald's. McDonald's Googie aesthetic embraced a vibrant yellow, signifying joy and positivity. It was flagshipped by its signature golden arches, like a yellow brick road leading to paradise. This is because McDonald's is one of the most widely known brands aimed at children, so it's only natural then that it embraces that youthful optimism. Despite this, McDonald's has embraced a new, darker aesthetic fiercely. Look at this shit. Fucking foul. Many have pointed out that McDonald's is growing with its customers, making people who ate there in their 30s through their 60s as a kid feel welcome now. This new brand identity also follows the introduction of McCafe, which was McDonald's push to sell more coffee and give a more coffee shop-like feel to many of their restaurants. I suspect McCafe is behind this darker aesthetic, and look, McCafe itself is pretty fine, but I don't see how it can be like the play place and be kind of segregated from the restaurant, uh, like separate but equal. Or like how they're doing Cosmics now, which is basically just McCafe, but its own restaurant. Look, ideas like McCafe might be novel, but when you want to appeal to adulthood, please don't replicate the cruel, boring, dark nature of it. And don't fucking talk to me about wanting to get rid of color and fun to appeal to maturity when you know damn well that every guy in their 30s would cum their pants at the return of Iron Man in the next Avengers. <laughs> Let me repeat that. That's a colorful comic book character that every guy in their 30s would scream like a little girl to see come back to the big screen. And you know I'm right. 
Gotta live moss. Taco Bell is a strange one because they went from having this very warm color scheme with yellows and oranges, not just in their logo, but on their architectural buildings as well. They served Mexican style cuisine and had a Mexican style architecture to boot. And now they've become like a purple fucking spaceship? Like what the fuck are we doing here? Like I hate the boxy design of it, but I almost respect like how ridiculous this is and how like drastic of a change. Like they went from having like this cool kind of orange to this like purple. I think they definitely know that their audience is just a bunch of potheads or people who are shit face drunk coming in at like midnight to get their tacos and this is what this was trying to be, but I mean like, what the fuck? Pizza Hut. Everybody knows the iconic Pizza Hut with its gigantic red roof and it looks like a hat on the roof. Everyone knows this. But a Pizza Hut executive recently criticized the Red Roof's quintessential to the brand's identity. Slowly but surely, Pizza Hut has been making new models of their restaurants without that iconic Red Roof. How does that Pizza Hut executive not understand that the Red Roof is not just iconic, but it's the actual logo of the company? How are you going to say no one out pizzas the hut when your hut looks like shit? Wendy's and Burger King, I kind of got to give props to for actually keeping their color, but I mean, come on, this is this is still a bunch of crap. What kills me though is that there are many other fast food restaurants out there that actually still look dope and haven't followed this trend. Rally still has it going on. Look, they got Googie architecture down to a T. Still kicking it, let's go. Look, all I'm saying is, why can't more fast food restaurants he like Jack in the Box. I mean, look at this, we got color, it's purple. I mean, look at the drive-thru sign. It's modeled after Jack himself. Again, so much color, it could be a little less boxy. But I mean, god damn, dude, this is like actually fun and not just depressing. This trend of dumbing down brands in order to have less character is something people have most commonly seen in company logos in a trend called debranding. Debranding is where companies take their logo and simplify it to remove many distinct features. Essentially deconstructing their visual identity, this new trend has been met online with a lot of hate, and I think rightfully so. These corporations with their freaking hieroglyphics, can they make this more clear for a guy like me? I got places to be. Some of the main reasons for debranding is the new digital age. With many people looking at logos on a smaller screen, having less detail can make a brand easier to recognize. Another reason is the fact that debranding is a modern trend, so a company with a new debranded logo might seem more new and fresh to consumers. But regarding this change in aesthetics, people will come back to the visual pollution argument. To which I have to say, are you fucking stupid? This bland, lifeless trend of architecture is visual pollution. I get it, you would rather see Vermont forests or Miami beaches, but this inoffensive brutalism is quite simply the aesthetic of dystopia. Some have attributed that the reason that debranding initiatives are spilling into architecture is because it increases the resale value of buildings. But how in the world does it make sense that something that looks this ugly and is less unique is worth more money? I get that much of the reasoning for debranding is sound, but when you boil it down to what it actually is, it's the dumbing down of culture. It's making things less interesting and less distinct. Like, do you really have to treat me like an idiot to sell a product? I, I don't think it should be this way. Reject modernity, embrace tradition.